Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So far, the bank shutdown contagion hasn't spread yet, but the stock market bear is growling even more loudly. Last I saw, the Dow was off 400 points. Um, maybe not as we close. But in any event, you got the Credit Suisse counterparty and capital problems headline in the early morning session. But that's going to be up to the Swiss government, which will probably wind backing them up. Let me just try some good news, okay? Just some good news for a moment. I know it's in short supply. The Fed Treasury Lending Facility, which is really underreported development, is in fact a very good thing, okay? It's called the Bank Term Funding Program. I mentioned it earlier in the week. It offers loans up to a year to backstop liquidity emergencies. The seed corn of $25 billion from the Treasury's Exchange Stabilization Fund. And that allows the central bank to leverage off that almost as much as they want or need, just in case. Just in case what? You know, just in case. By the way, this was the way the Trump administration coordinated with the Fed during the COVID shutdown days for a number of emergency funds. And you might not like the idea... But you know what? You got to go back to the 19th century to a famous British economic journalist. His name was Walter Badgett, who said in times of emergency, quote, lend freely on good collateral with a small penalty rate. And that's basically what the Fed and the Treasury have set up. A small penalty rate, 10 basis points above overnight paper called the OIS, which is the overnight index swap rate, basically the federal funds rate. And by the way, the paper, the collateral is good collateral. It's treasuries and, you know, good mortgage-backed securities. So there's some good news here to stem the tide. That could be a firebreaker, that um, emergency lending. Stop the contagion. Now, on the other hand, what's bad is the FDIC insuring uninsured deposits. Now, the left-wing ideologues at the FDIC... Who still, who still have not sold Silicon Valley Bank, despite plenty of suitors such as KKR, Apollo, Blackstone, and many others, they're still sitting on their hands. You know, they could take taxpayers and the FDIC off the hook if they just sell the damn bank. I don't know what is holding them up. Also bad, this is worse, the ongoing story of the absolute failure of Mary Daly's San Francisco Fed supervisors and examiners to step in on Silicon Valley Bank with their wild investment strategy and long-term bonds while interest rates were soaring or their mismatched asset liability risk-taking. I haven't seen a word about the failure of the responsibilities of the San Francisco Fed. They have supervisors, they have examiners, and they should have done their job because you know what? It wasn't just the last three weeks or the last three months. People knew about uh, Silicon Valley Bank's problems for at least a year. And where was the San Francisco Fed? Now, we have House Financial Services Chair Congressman Pat McHenry. He's going to talk about that and some other things in just a few moments, so stay tuned. Then, apparently it's some more bad. There is such a slew of crazy left-wing stuff surrounding this Silicon Valley bank. I mean, this is some weird bank. First of all, they gave $73 million to the Marxist BLM Black Lives Matter movement at the height of COVID and the race riots in 2020. Then they had a board of directors who basically chock full of Hillary Clinton donors and virtually nobody who understood bank management. And then there's this $5 billion commitment to various climate and diversity, equity, inclusion, woke investments... And then you have a regional Federal Reserve head, that's our Ms. Daly again, who gave a speech in Washington and wrote a paper saying, quote, as monetary policymakers, our job is to navigate climate change, end quote. Now, that's not necessarily a sin. It's just kind of odd when you throw that in with the rest of the Silicon Valley Bank crazy mix. Also at odds with this wise sentiment from Fed Chair Jay Powell. This is important. Remember he said this a while back? We should stick to our knitting and not wander off to pursue perceived social benefits that are not tightly linked to our statutory goals and authorities. We are not, and we will not be, a climate policy maker. Taking on new goals, however worthy, without a clear statutory mandate would undermine the case for our independence. 
Now, that is exactly right. One of Jay Powell's best moments. Now, whether Ms. Daly heard him or anybody else involved in this crazy bank game, I don't know. But Jay Powell is correct. The job of the Fed is not climate change. It should be zero or at least less than 2% inflation. The problem here is, as we've said a million times, the Fed was in denial about the inflation two years ago. They waited way too long. Zero interest rates. Then they finally figured out. And, of course, they ratcheted up interest rates. And a lot of banks probably have securities that are way underwater because they either didn't see it coming or didn't believe it. So that's the Fed's burden to bear. But at least Jay Powell's got the climate change part right. By the way, one last thought. On the East Coast, in New York, we have the Signature Bank, which has also been closed. Now, their executives produced a Broadway-style musical to launch the bank in 2001, talking about how to start a bank that will, quote, diminish and fail. And another song, quote, how to build a bank for dummies, end quote. You know, for me, I read this stuff, and honestly, I can't believe it's true. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> At least get us a new private sector owners for these dumb banks so the public doesn't have to suffer anymore. This story is too weird.